Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 Podcast, LLC. Please say the LLC. And before you listen to this episode, I just got to let you know, I need you to stop what you're doing. Go to blkrenaissance.com, and I need you to shop for the culture. That's right. Anytime you use the promo code LLC20 at Black Renaissance Clothing's website, you will get 20% off your order. Off rip. No questions asked. So do me a favor and do it for the culture. Peace. Hey y'all, it's your girl Sade with Black on Black Rhyme. Step to the mic. Mic check. People always ask me where I get my confidence from. And I get it from inside. It's an inside thing, y'all. And when it comes to beautiful skin, I rock with Blendia by India. Where her motto is, be confident in your skin. She has a variety of naturally made soaps to keep you smelling good. Hair products for long, luscious, healthy hair. And even beer products for men. You know, we gotta keep those struggle beers away. So visit at blendiabyindia.com and use promo 2020 skin to get 10% off your order. Thank you Blendia by India for being a sponsor of the 2020 podcast LLC. Please say the LLC. Hey, this is Butter So Fly of Power Lines Poetry here to let you know anytime I feel good, I have to look good. So you have to listen to me. Make sure you go to gurudesigns.com, use a 3 instead of an e. The website is great, so you can get something for yourself. And then she makes custom clothes for men, too. And guess what? I got a promo code for you. Use 20 slash 20, and it'll get you 15% off of any order, $25 or more. You can't beat that. Go to gurudesigns.com. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. Mm-hmm. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose. Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews. The hottest beat coming through, dropping knowledge on all of you. Get a peek at the front of you with the truth that they offer you. Yeah, hands up, we do it for the culture. To give artists and businesses more exposure. Keep it real and stay solid just like a boulder. It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower. Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower. But if I stay running, I promise they're getting closer. More over success, my older. And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like folders. I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll, we'll be on the whole different vibe though we like to ride slow and keep our windows tinted so you really can see us like stevie wonder waking up with his eyes closed yeah got the kind of flow that rocked the boat on my 16s of pounds of dope and if you figure you can hang with me on the mic then grab some rope matter of fact better grab some hope while you at it we keep it live it's time to tune in turn up the sound on what you're using it goes so hard i think it's bruising the show is 2020 no need to zoom in yeah be so emotional or whatnot and like being open with their emotions taught me that that's normal like mm, i've noticed okay. like a lot of girls have this um mis 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 got it, it? Uh, misconception misconception that you know men aren't supposed to show emotions and stuff and it's probably due to the fact that a lot of the men in their family just didn't show emotion they probably never saw their dad cry. Mm-hmm. Probably, you know, probably never had somebody that was a man in their family get emotional with them, sit in the middle with them. Mm-hmm. Probably never seen it before, you know. And so, I can understand where a lot of um, girls who were raised that way will also take that mentality into their relationships mm-hmm. and basically ruin <laughs> men they come across because you know that's what they were taught. It's not right, but how much can you blame them when that's all they know? Mm. But yeah, the men in my family are crybabies. You know, the women are definitely tougher than the guys are, which is cool. You know, it's cool. But I support. I I'm never like downing them from like, being emotional because it's a normal emotion. Like it's human. You're supposed to like supposed right. to cry sometimes. Who don't cry? <laughs> You said if you don't cry, nigga, you broke. I told you, if you don't cry, something wrong with you. <laughs> right. If you don't cry, if, if you telling me the person that you quote unquote dating in a relationship with that you can't cry in front of me or you don't cry at all as a man, something wrong. <laughs> That's not okay. That's not normal. Sir, you are broken and we need to either go to therapy or break up because 
I'm not finna live my life like that. It's it's refreshing to and I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look at look and look how big it is. Look how big it is. You see that? You see that? <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Um it's refreshing to hear that. Because there's so many of you that are like, nigga, you crying? The fuck? Like, and I know a lot of times when we come to, like, the round tables to then discuss this with women, y'all be like, not y'all be like, but some people be like, where are these women? Like, who the fuck do y'all be fucking with? Like, that, that how y'all like this? It's a, it's not only who we mess with, it's just what we see in the world. There's other experiences we experience by proxy. You know, other people that we hang with, um, relatives, you know, and that's where majority of our thoughts on marriage come from. It's like a culmination of other people, other family members, trauma. Mm-hmm. So we have this preconceived notion of what marriage is going to be or what we're expected from a woman. Like the conversations we have with people who are married can either be amazing horrendous like from it for me at least i can tell you instances where i had an amazing conversation with my uncle about being married and he's divorced but about you know what to expect and where he went wrong or i could tell you situations where my other uncle told me about the how he was going to use me as an alibi so he could smash other women and how his wife knows but she ain't gonna do anything because he keeps bringing that money so i have you know, both polar opposite, you know, experiences kind of, kind of burned in my brain of, it could be horrible this way, oh, not horrible, it can be horrible this way, it can be great this way, you know what I'm saying, what can you take from each situation, and one common thread is they all start off great, but they just find it scary to open up and communicate about emotions or finances, like those two are like the toughest things to talk about like I remember like arguments about money that didn't seem major you know like like certain orders that bills were paid in sometimes would throw off what they expected to have but instead of looking at the full situation of okay this is taken care of what can we do It's you didn't follow my instructions. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of that fell back into, well, if you want me to lead, let me lead. Follow my lead. You know what I'm saying? And that made me like, like, well, what the fuck is it? Do do a lead or do do we lead or what the fuck are we supposed to do? Yeah, I was, I don't have a whole lot of, um, Okay, so I, there's nobody in my family that I can talk to about marriage. I'm sure that, that well, there are, but I don't have anybody that I would want to get advice from. Understood. You know? Understood. Like, um, my grandmother was married to my granddad mm-hmm. before he passed away, and they never got a divorce, but they were separated my whole entire life. You know, Mm -hmm. so I don't even know when they separated because my only remembrance of the both of them is them being separated, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, for all the great things he did, it was a lot of horrible things that he did too. And so, she doesn't have a whole lot of great stories to tell about her marriage, so I don't have Mm -hmm. any things to like combat from so I just don't know what to ask her when it comes to that and my mom was the same way she she's married to my baby brother's um dad but they've been separated for some years now um I never asked her about her marriage cause you know well, cause I was alive for a good chunk of that so I know bits and pieces about you know certain things that were going on would you ever like want to know like So, okay, the thing about it is, and I think for me in particular, the way that I learn is from watching other people fuck up. Yeah, So that's, that's the wise way. seeing how people failed just, you know, teaches me, okay, that particular way probably wasn't the best way, you know? 
So, <laughs> I hate to say it, but their marriages were failures. And mm-hmm. so, I feel like there's nothing for me to ask about because I saw how it failed. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> From I, the I, outside, you know. And so, for me, it's like, exactly. what else should I, what else could I ask about Besides the fact that you know it didn't work out, and how did how did it not work out? Why why didn't it not work? Like stuff like that, and stuff. And particularly for me, I don't care about why it didn't work out. Really? I don't really care about how it failed. I don't. I don't. I don't care. I don't. That's not the stuff about marriage that I care about. <laughs> maybe that's just me, and I don't think it's because I'm a pessimist either. I'm one of them people, and maybe that's like part of trauma that I deal with. I like to know what went wrong so I can. Prepare. See, that's the problem, though, I think. Is well, I, let me take that back. Let me, let me redact that. I don't mean prepare. So I can have an understanding of what could possibly go wrong. If I understand, it's like case studies, right? Like doctors, they have case studies all the time. There'll be someone who may pass away or someone who may have lived, but they'll study it so that they can better understand it. Even if it's a situation they don't see themselves getting into. It could be a tidbit of information in there that may help you in another situation where you see something similar. So I feel like I get what you're saying because my mom's marriage is like that. I really don't care what happened, but that's probably because I'm personally and I'm different from you. I'm personally vested in what happened to my mom and what I saw, you know, Ditto. Um. so in other situations where something specifically failed. I do want to know the inner workings of it. I do want to know because much like the Joker tells Batman, all it takes is one bad day. You know, uh, I I want to know where their mind was at the time. What kind of economic structure did the household have? What kind of job was being worked? Like, how were y'all communicating at the end of the day? Were their children involved? How were the kids doing? Like, all of that I want to know because I want to, at the end of the day, examine the, the scenario plug myself in it as now and see how I would navigate and draw some conclusions. You know what I'm saying? I hit myself in the mouth. <laughs> draw some conclusions. Speaking with them hands. Right, you know, <laughs> animated, cool. Um, just draw some con- conclusions that may, may not even for myself because I really like talking to people and who knows, I might just have just a small nugget that might offer some enlightening you know, because it's nothing worse than having someone pour their heart out to you and vent to you and legit ask a question and, yeah, I know, and not have a legit answer for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes the fact that they came to you and they didn't get an answer from you can deter them from pursuing that answer altogether. And I know that's not my responsibility. I get that. But if I could just prepare myself for something my friends be going through, maybe I can prepare the correct statement. Maybe I can have the right mindset or empathy to offer them to give them some kind of solace. That's all. I see what you're saying. Um, and I support that to an extent of like learning to, to um, have a better understanding of situations. Yeah. But I just personally feel like you can't see what somebody else, how somebody else feel and just assume that that's going to be you too. I don't agree with that kind of mindset. And I feel like a lot of people like think like that. Mm-hmm. Like they think, oh, such and such marriage failed because X, Y, Z. So there's a good chance that my marriage going to feel that same way. Or, you know, it didn't work out for them because, you know, they couldn't talk about this or they couldn't talk about that. And I just feel like if if that's if I get with somebody like that then I don't think I'm be able to do you know and I just don't think people should like take those kinds of um I don't think people should take other people's experiences and just assume that that is the the um litmus test for everybody mm. cuz everybody is going to have their own issues I agree like your issues going to are going to be vastly different from your friends who are married now like you, for one, you'll probably get married much later in life than they did. True. So how they experienced their marriage when they were younger is going to be way different from how you experience your marriage as, as an older man. Correct. And it would be the same for me. My friends are, half of my friends are married and half of my friends are not. So in the half that are married, they got married in like around 25 or so. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, in a in a late late twenties. If I would to, if I were to get married, it would be in my um I don't know maybe in my thirties <laughs> if I do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? If I do, it would be in my thirties. It'd be later in life, and so how they approach their marriage would be completely different from how I would approach my marriage. And so seeing how they deal with stuff in their 20s, I might not even have to come across those bridges in my 30s, you know? That's true. I might not even have to, like, speak on something like that when I'm 30. Or when I'm 30, I might have to, like, have a whole new situation that they never have to even, like, blink on when they was 20. That's true. You know? So, I understand, like, hearing people's views about stuff and, like, and it's really good to, like, speak to a married person to hear about the struggles they had when it came to communication and stuff. Right. Because I feel like that is the most beneficial when people have a misconception of what they thought their marriage was supposed to be. Those are the best conversations to, like, sit back and watch or, like, listen in on because you, it's, like... You really get to see how folks have a um, preconceived notion of what marriage is before they ever get married. And a lot of times they take those those notions to their marriage and then they're shocked when it's not what they thought it was supposed to be. It happens to women a lot because, you know, society sells us Disney dreams. <laughs> and, you know, we get to we get there and it's like, wait. The birds aren't chirping today, and I just don't understand. Right. <laughs> you know, and I'm pretty sure men have their own, like, mm. misconceptions about it. And then they get to it, and they're like, wait, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And it causes a divide within the, in the within the marriage. And sometimes people can fight through it and make a change. But other times, folks and just end. Yeah. <laughs> folks just end, you know. And so, I agree with that, you know. But I just think that people should always play it by ear when it comes to their own particular marriages. That was deep. Was it really? A little bit. I feel like it was kind of lightweight. Surface level. That's your favorite word. Surface level is my favorite word because you know you be surface level sometimes, bro. I do too.